All right, so we got some testing we're gonna do here today. So we are gonna work on the actual temperature of the equipment that we're using to be able to hit golf balls. So again, number one thing I get from people is that it's short, you know, whatever, that their distances are off. Now for me personally, I think they're right on the money. I know a lot of people that I think they get right on the money distances. Now we've talked in the past about ways that maybe your ball flight isn't getting the distance that you want. There's obviously things to consider when you're playing outside, the conditions, the outside conditions like temperature, things like that. But the thing that I don't think a lot of people think about is the temperature of their equipment as you are going to hit balls. All right. So I wanted to go through that a little bit. Let's do a little test and uh, we'll kind of see this. This hopefully will help you when you're playing in some outdoor conditions of trying to make your, you know, make your swing a little bit better and also understand your game a little bit better, too, as we go through this. So the first thing we're testing, all right, so I have my studio out in the garage. It uh, is not temperature controlled unless I turn on heaters. So overnight, we just happen to have uh, very, very cold negative temperatures here in Chicago. So good chance to get out there and try things out in a little bit of extreme temperature. So the temperature in the room when we went out there actually couldn't be read on our thermometer. Now, it's not a traditional thermometer. It does have a room setting where you can actually get the temperature of the room, which is what we're using. It also has a mode where you can get the temperature of a surface. So we can do that as well. However, it was so cold and my club sat out there, the golf ball sat out there, and the room obviously was cold that we couldn't get a temperature reading. So it was well below 30 degrees in the room when we did this test, all right? so. Let's take a look at those numbers of what it looked like hitting seven iron. So I did do some movement stuff and all that to get loose, um, but I was wearing, you know, clothing that was a little bit, uh, you know, again, trying to stay a little bit warm, but, uh, you know, you know, not quite 100 percent there, I would say, as far as how fast I was going to be swinging. That's something to take into my um, account when it's cold out, too, is how fast are you going to swing? You typically don't swing as fast, especially if you're wearing more layers and if it's cold. But anyway, with that said, we can look at the numbers, right? So. Let's look at these shots. You can see my carries, 146, 139, 147, 139, 155. This one, well, this last one, 155, I hit very well and I actually uh, pulled it, right? So that's part of why it went farther, okay? You can see how these the rest of these shots are starting um, as they're going. Here we go. Uh, I did keep all the temperatures for this test which are here at the end, everything is the same, okay? So I did make sure everything was the same, 82 degrees. That is the the temperature it's kind of giving you for outdoors, uh, you know, the weather, right? But that doesn't take into account our equipment. So that's something you have to keep in mind because like my smashes are lower. Smash is the ability for that equipment to basically expand and contract, right? When you hit a golf ball, the golf ball will get crushed and then it explodes, right? That's part of how you hit it. Same thing with a club face. Club faces are hollow, right? The club heads. And so you're getting a little bit of a trampoline effect off of that club head. So we're just not gonna get as much of it. Now, to what we did then is uh, I took the clubs inside, the seven iron, same seven iron, same golf ball, took it inside and I had it sit inside for about a half an hour. And what I was able to do is warm up the equipment, got Got it to uh, about 60 degrees or so, depending on what how you shot it. it. It's definitely warmer, right? So we got it to that, and then we were able to go back out and hit five more shots. Uh, I didn't do anything to the room, and I kept the conditions the same as we went, okay? So you can see, you know, okay, my club speed up a little bit, but you can see this one at 87, which was right about where I was with the other swings, right? 87 to 89, this 85 one, okay. Um, you could just see how much farther that golf ball is going. Obviously this one is shorter because my smash is down. I'm, I must not have hit this one as good. It looks like I hit it a little right as well, but all these other smashes are going up and the distances are going up, right? 
So that is something you got to keep in mind. This is getting up to where my equipment was about 60 degrees in temperature, okay? And that took a half hour in a 72 degree room, right? That's what we have our house about. And I kind of put it over in the sun a little bit too, but you know, you have to get this stuff warmed up if you're going to play. Think about when you're playing outside, the temperatures that everything is at and where you're at with how your equipment is going to be, right? So the, the last test I wanted to do was go through and actually warm up the equipment and try to get it as close to maybe what I would have in a summer day and just see what type of effect that would have. So you can see my average is 159.4 compared to 145.8. So that's 14 yards right there. Okay. Um, almost 15. So what I did then is warm everything up. I actually put the clubs near the fireplace that we have had them kind of going, um, got everything up to around 80 degrees or so is where the equipment was at. Obviously, I think it would be a little bit warmer out in the sun, but uh, you know, maybe not. But just try to warm everything up a little bit. And you can see here are those numbers when I warmed everything up even a little bit more. Now, to be fair, swinging faster, okay and really didn't see much difference in the numbers when we went up from that temperature level i mean i'm swinging a little faster smashes are good they're about the same and we're only gaining about four more yards in that uh from that number right so didn't matter i did hit a few of them left too so that might make it go a little that would make it go a little farther as well but i did keep everything uh the same as far as the conditions 82 30 percent humidity uh same elevation and uh, pressure so that is something to look at but again i just when i'm talking to people a lot about stuff and they're hitting balls in their garage and in these environments you know even if you have a heater and you warm up that room your equipment isn't going to it's going to take a while to get caught up to if if you have the room like in air temperature right so you know what can you do you could try to warm it up with a heater or you know what I do is I just accept the fact that, okay, this is how it's going. And I worry more about, all right, consistency of the numbers. And I worry about seeing some numbers like swing speed, right? I worry about seeing how I'm launching it, things like that. But you'll see that smash factor drop. You're going to see the ball just not travel as fast, things like that. So again, this is pretty consistent. This would be consistent across all launch monitors um, that are reading the data because you are just having that ball travel slower. It's frozen. It's not going to work as well. OK, so just wanted to do that little test. It was something I was, you know, again, I get that question. That's easily the number one question from people that are getting new units, things like that. From there, uh, what I would do is compare your club distances to what you see, the cl or your club speeds, I should say, to what you see with uh, PGA Tour or LPGA Tour numbers and see if you're on the same level. And if you are, then you, okay, then you have to worry about how you're hitting it and stuff like that. But if you are, if you're hitting it or swinging it slower, you're not going to hit it as far as those LPGA or PGA Tour players. I promise you they are getting the maximum amount of distance from their swing speed that is possible. So that's just always going to be a good benchmark to look at. But Again, always get that question. Wanted to give you something to think about and uh, maybe this could help you get those numbers up a little bit or just be aware of it. And uh, you know what? Be aware of this when you play. If you're playing on cold days, guess what? Ball's not gonna go very far. So you gotta keep that in mind as you're out there, okay? So thanks everybody for all the questions that get sent in. Love answering them and uh, got some exciting videos coming up. I know a lot of people are having some questions about some other things with Mevo Plus. Uh, they will be coming up soon. I hopefully will answer those things soon and uh, yeah, excited for the PGA show too. We got some more of that stuff coming as well. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.